Hello everyone. In the next lecture of chemical equilibrium or thermodynamic approach in lecture number 8, the topic that is going to be discussed is Van't Hoff isochore. And here we have to start from the reaction isotherm for the reactions involving ideal gases. And the reaction isotherm is delta G equals to minus RT ln Kp plus RT sum over I ln Pi to the power nu I. The physical significances of all the terms are known to us still I'm repeating them. Delta G is free energy change, R is universal gas constant, T is the temperature of the reaction, Kp is the equilibrium constant in terms of pressure. Here this small p is partial pressure of ith component of gas and nu i is the coefficient, stoichiometric coefficient of the ith component of gas. If we differentiate this equation both sides with respect to temperature at constant pressure, then in the left hand side we shall get d dt of delta g and in the right hand side we have to differentiate this twice keeping L, ln kp constant differentiating t next time t constant ln kp uh, differentiating ln kp and r is always constant so it will be remaining as the coefficient so the first one if we take ln kp constant then the differentiation of t with respect to t is 1 so it is minus r ln kp next here for the negative sign here also minus and r for uh, being constant and t also now constant so the variable is now ln kp so the differentiation is as it is so d dt of ln kp now differentiation of this term here taking this part summation part constant and differentiation of t so r and then this constant part then differentiation of t is 1 so this is r sum over i ln pi to the power nu i next time r and r is as usual constant if you take t as constant then differentiation of this one is as usual that means d dt of sum over i ln pi to the power nu i now this part is zero if the pressures of the individual components are arbitrarily chosen so you are taking the pressure by your own choice okay so these pressures are some constant pressures so their logarithms are also constants and hence the differentiation would be zero so this part is vanished and the remaining three parts are minus r ln kp minus rt d dt of ln kp plus r sum over i ln pi to the power nu i okay and here we mention why this part is vanishing if both sides are multiplied by temperature then in the left hand side we shall get t into d dt of delta g in the right hand side instead of r ln kp we shall get rt ln kp and the negative sign as usual okay and in the minus rt d ln kp dt we shall get minus rt square d ln kp, kp dt and finally in the third term instead of r we are getting here rt and the summation term as usual now this part minus rt ln kp plus rt sum over i ln pi to the power nu i is nothing but delta z so this is we are writing here delta G instead of the first and the third term and the second term as usual minus RT square D DT of ln KP. We are here mentioning this that minus RT ln KP plus RT sum over I ln PI to the power nu I equals to delta G. Now this part taking to the left hand side and this part the left hand side part is taken to the right hand side. Then the equation is rearranged in its rearranged form is can be written as rt square d ln kp by dt equals to delta g minus t into d dt of delta g now from the gibbs helps uh, helmholtz relationship we know that delta g equals to delta g minus t into d dt of delta g equals to delta h so putting delta h in place of delta g minus t into d dt of delta g we can get this relationship rt square d ln kp by dt equals to delta h and rearranging this we can get this relationship d dt of ln kp equals to delta h by rt square and this green colored equation is known as the van Hoff isochore okay and here it can be described this numerical relationship can be described as the differentiation of natural log of equilibrium constant in terms of pressure with respect to temperature okay differentiation of natural log of equilibrium constant in terms of pressure with respect to temperature 
is equal to delta H by RT square where delta H is the enthalpy change and R universal gas constant T is the temperature okay now we have to plot log Kp against 1 by T so here we have to start from the Vanta Bicycle equation this equation as usual TL and Kp by dt equals to delta H by RT square this is a very 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 important equation and you have to uh, you have to apply this equation uh, in most of the cases when you are solving the numerical problems so now we have to take this dt the de denominator part dt into the right hand side and also the t square part below dt okay so we can write this equation as dl and kp equals to delta h by r and here into dt by t square okay now we have to integrate this both sides and without giving any limit this part is separated because these two parts are constant and here dt by t squared is the only variable. So the integration can be sign can be put in between them. So in the left hand side integration of dl and kp and in the right hand side delta h by r integration of dt by t squared. Now since we are not taking any uh, we are not giving any limit of the integration so we have to uh, get some integration constant here and this constant is set it is written as integration constant okay so the left hand side result of integration is ln kp and here 1 by t square means minus 1 by t so minus delta h by rt plus z is the integration constant and if this natural log is converted into log base 10 then it becomes log kp and in the right hand side you have to divide this by 2.303 because ln kp is 2.303 log kp so here you are writing delta h by 2.303 r into 1 by t this t part is again separated because this is the variable and the negative sign as usual here and here instead of z we are writing z prime because this is not z this is z by 2.303 so it is uh, yet another constant okay now can you draw a straight line from this yes it can be possible if you consider log kp as the y variable and 1 by t as the x variable okay so if log kp is plotted against 1 by t then a straight line will be obtained where slope would be minus delta h by 2.303 r and the intercept would be z prime now this slope may be positive or negative depending upon the value of delta H. If delta H is positive that means if the reaction is endothermic then the overall term is negative so the slope would be negative. Or on the other hand if delta H is negative that means the reaction is exothermic then the whole term would be positive that means the slope would be positive. So the graphical presentations would be like this. For delta H positive, the slope is negative. For delta H negative, the slope is positive. Delta H is positive for endothermic reactions and delta H is negative for exothermic reactions. These things are known to all of you. And here you see that the log Kp value is uh, given in the uh, y axis and 1 by t value is put in the x axis. Here also the same. Okay. Now for solving the numerical problems regarding this Van der Waals core. Uh, you have to you you may be given two different temperatures okay and one kp value so you have to find out another kp value because kp is a function of temperature equilibrium constant changes definitely with respect to temperature at high temperature definitely the it has some uh, impact of temperature change maybe the value of kp change uh, uh, increase or maybe the value of kp decrease for, for try to think from this equation if in this case okay in this case t is in the denominator so if t is increasing then the 1 by t is decreasing so from the left to left to right the temperature is decreasing here also the log kp value is decreasing that means here kp is directly proportional to temperature that means in case of endothermic reactions if temperature is increased then the forward reaction takes place so definitely here temperature increases so 1 by t decreases so left to right temperature left to right the parameter decreases here this one increases so they have inverse proportional relationship okay that means if temperature is increased k 
ATP decreases or vice versa. So for exothermic reactions, if temperature is increased, then the reaction would move towards the backward direction. Okay, and this will be discussed more elaborately when the last Atelier's principle will be discussed. So here, how to find out two different types of Kp values at two different temperatures. So starting from the same Pantop isochore, this equation dLn Kp by dt equals to delta H by rt squared and or dLn Kp equals to delta H by r, the constant terms separated from the variable term dt by t squared and then integrating both sides giving limits. So the limit at T1 temperature, the equilibrium constant in terms of pressure is Kp1 and at T2 temperature, the equilibrium constant in terms of pressure is Kp2. So these two are the limits. The lower limit is T1 here and Kp1 here. The upper limit is T2 here. So Kp2 is here. Okay. And the result is ln Kp2 by Kp1 equals to minus delta H by R because this is minus 1 by T. Okay. So this when this minus sign is uh, taken here, then on putting the impose uh, on imposing the limiting conditions, the 1 by T2 becomes 1 by T2 minus 1 by T1. Okay, and the final result is delta H by R T1 minus T2 by T2. And when the negative sign is multiplied here, then it becomes T2 minus T1 by T2. Okay, so the final relationship in terms of net in terms of log instead of natural log, just log. Kp2 by Kp1 equals to delta H by 2.303 R. Okay, just the same way natural log to base 10 log and the terms within the bracket T2 minus T1 by T2. Okay. So for a certain chemical reaction, if delta H is known, then the Kp value at any temperature can be determined from the Kp1 value at T equals to T1. Okay. So that's all for today. Thank you. Have a nice day.